Mr. Uh, Simpson, would you please stand and face the jury? Even today, as O.J. Simpson looked directly at them, Mr. the members of the jury refused to return his gaze. In the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA097211, we, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant or Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson. And Simpson dissolved in relief. Prosecutors froze in stunned disbelief, braced for the second verdict. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant Orenthal James Simpson not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Ronald Lyle Goldman, a human being, as charged in count two of the information. Across the aisle, O.J. Simpson's family broke down too. There's tears of joy. As the drawers filed out, one of them, an African-American man, raised a clenched fist toward Simpson, an apparent show of support. In the halls, other Simpson friends and relatives erupted in cheers. Simpson's lead attorney said they won with the evidence, not with the race card. We said that if we could shatter the prosecution's timeline so that O.J. Simpson couldn't have committed this crime, that there would be a reasonable doubt. That's, ever, that's even before we ever got to the socks, the glove, and, and firm or anything else. Credibility was always an important issue in this case. And I think that's what the jury focused on. I think the jury, uh, initially when Mark Furman denied ever using the N-word, knew, as the rest of the world knew, that he was not telling the truth. Hey everyone, welcome, welcome, welcome to The Mix. Like this video, share this video. Thank you guys for tuning in to my channel. Thank you for your support both domestically and internationally need for you guys to listen to this video yes listen to it from beginning to end i won't keep you all long if you're interested in donating hit that cash up right here right here right here all donations go toward content enhancement creation you can find other donation information in the description section of this post as well in advance for your contributions okay you guys if you're interested in participating in polls head on over to the community section i always have polls going on so vote 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 it's free to like you guys it's free to share it's free to subscribe so go ahead and share this video share 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 sharing is caring you guys but help push a girl the mix through the algorithm yes 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 okay you guys so let me jump right into the topic as you can see it really wasn't no intro as you can see what this video is going to be about yes you saw that clip and i'm going to share some more towards the end i'm sure you all are aware Mr. Um, O.J. Simpson has succumbed to prostate cancer. Yes, and he's no longer with us. Prayers and condolences to his family and children and especially his close friends. So yes, Mr. O.J. Simpson has, is, is now deceased due to um, health issues, prostate cancer. So, and I'll, as you guys saw in the beginning, he was acquitted, acquitted of M-U-R-D-E-R -E back in 1995. That was like televised all over the world. It was in my prime. Go ahead, you guys. Um, hit that like, hit that like and share this video. It's free to like, it's free to share, it's free to subscribe. Yes, yes, yes. So, but yeah. So, okay, you guys, let me ask this question. Where were you during that time? Where were you in 1995? How old were you all? I mean, drop some comments in the chat. This is a safe space. It's free to share. You know, drop some comments in the chat. Where were you when the verdict was delivered? Back in 1995, I, like I said, I was young, outside, in the mix, <laughs> pun intended. Were any of you born at that time? Especially for those who are tuning into the mix, who are subscribers. Yes, shout out to you guys, the youth. I see you guys, as far as analytic wise, you guys are tuning in. Um, where were you? Excuse me, where were you? Yeah, and how old were you are then? Were you even born? <laughs> were you even born, youth? <laughs> how old were you? Just a tot, a toddler. <laughs> were you in 1995? How old were you? Drop that in the chat. <laughs> Drop that in the chat, younger generation. Those who are young, who are tuning into the mix, how old were you guys? So. For those who do not know, let me just give you guys a little bit of background of Mr. Orthol James Simpson because that's his government name. Uh, he went by O.J. Simpson, the juice, you know. So uh, I used to see him on TV all the time. I just thought that he was very charismatic. Um, and we didn't see back then a lot of black men on television, black people at that, you know, in the 1995s. Remember, the civil rights movement was in 1960. So pff, it wasn't that, it wasn't like it was 100 years from then, you know. So things were still like as today, just really sketchy when it comes to race when it comes to um, education, when it comes to society and just social issues and justices in the criminal and civil justice system and all of that. So that's still uh, uh, an issue today, whether you want to agree or not. I mean, we can agree to disagree, but that's a whole nother topic for a whole nother day. As you can see on this slideshow, we have what Johnny Cochran, the lead attorney, you know, let me pause right here, the architect. He was responsible for creating a dream team. That's what they called it back then. And just to see uh, a black man in a position of, uh, um, I would say, in someone in a position of power in terms of being a legal representative and just being intelligent and calculating and all of that, it was just a sight to see, in my opinion. Again, not often that black people um, or in myself would see this on television. I mean, check the history of America, and I'm just keeping it real, you guys, respectfully. And um, again, we can agree to disagree. So. 
But that's a whole nother topic again for a whole nother day. But just seeing Johnny Cochran on television as an attorney, a lead attorney, a lead attorney, you know, and then just to see nowadays how um, a lot of people are melanated pursuing their um, degree in law and all of that. It's, that's really great to see. We have more attorneys nowadays, more black attorneys. I believe Johnny Cochran was um, the catalyst for that in terms of he inspired a lot of black people to get their law degree. So, um, so um, for those who do not know, OJ Simpson was not only a football player, uh, top tier athlete that he was, yes. He also was a brand, a walking brand and an actor prior to uh, standing trial for the M-U-R-D-E-R of his wife, then wife, Nicole Brown Simpson and Ron Goldman for which he was acquitted of in 1995 meaning not guilty Take on the acquittal you guys it was definitely a win for the black melanated community we did not care we did not care you know what i'm not going to speak for everyone so most of us i'm going to say did not care that oj simpson had distanced himself from um the black community when he gained the fame the fortune and all of that type of stuff um prior to you know standing trial we were just excited excited that the legal outcome favored a black man which is totally uncommon in america and until this day uh, criminal justice wise and civil wise and when i say civil it's the money part because statistics has reported and one day i'm going to do some content on it how in my opinion black people are more likely to be lowballed in settlements to be lowballed and as far as financial civil, civil settlements and to be low lowballed in jury awarded amounts when it comes to civil cases so that's a whole nother subject for a whole nother day in comparison to the white counterparts so but yeah i digress so now did i follow the trial from a day-to-day -day, you know situation activity wise um actually no i did not i'm y'all young adult guys i would um watch it though uh, here and there if i if i wasn't outside but uh watch it from time to time the live coverage because it was televised everywhere yes it was and so i would watch it on some days if i was available or wasn't outside in the streets <laughs> i did um watch the infamous, infamous chase the bronco chase shout out to the bronco trucks <laughs> head on over to the i'm going to drop the link in the description section, section of this post boosie gifted his fiance girlfriend slash girlfriend a bronco i think it was her birthday or he just gifted her that anyway so a lot of people were clowning her i guess trying to say boosie was broke or saying that you know she broncos wasn't nothing but that the new broncos are nice so i'll drop the link in the description section but anyway back to lj simpson the bronco chase yes broncos were very popular after that too it was white bronco so i watched that and i found myself back then you guys i promise you i was watching that on live tv i found myself back then praying for him like lord please let this be a good outcome in terms of I hope he doesn't unalive himself because back then um, they were saying that his buddy or friend was in a truck with him and he um, had, it was a pow pow, one of them or somebody had a pow pow and OJ was um, threatening to unalive himself or whatever. So I was just hoping that didn't happen. And most importantly, I was hoping as well, well equally important that the law enforcement police did not S-H-O-O-T him because it was a firearm in a car. So, although it was illegal, but I was just praying, watching it live, like, please don't, on a live, so please don't let this end, basically, in a tragic, you know, situation. Don't let it be a tragic situation. But at any rate, at any rate, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and share some um, clips, some more clips, some, some reactions, especially from some people on social media, celebrities, non-celebrities, regarding um, Mr. O.J. Simpson, or Don J. Simpson, the late, great O.J. Simpson, because as far as accolades and just his career tra trajectory, I mean, give credit where it's due period you know so um, i'm going to go ahead and share some clips with you guys and leave you guys with that like this video share this video thank you guys for tuning into the mix stay tuned for tomorrow sip and recap sip and react that's on sunday evening 8 30 p.m central standard time i'll drop the link um later on today or early morning tomorrow and just stay connected set your subscriptions your notification bells and all of that you guys so you can be in tune and we can just you know get it in for the past week in terms of you know what was going on in the world etc etc probably do more of a deeper dive in the oj simpson situation but i'm going to leave you guys with some clips from uh, on people reacting via social media and thank you guys for tuning in again it's free to like it's free to share it's free to subscribe if you're interested in donating go ahead and hit that cash app yes yes all donations go to our content enhancement creation i hope your weekend is going well like share subscribe and i will talk to you all soon uh, he was very popular. Everybody loved him. And I found it interesting that somebody who was beloved by many 
as a nice guy all of a sudden became the face of villainy and i think it had a lot to do with a lot of things besides this case that they had on him uh, so i mean if you want to see what he's about just look at anything from car advertisement commercials or rental commercials to insurance commercials to sitcoms you know he was the guy and linda taylor went to law school with me went to ucla with me as an undergrad she came out of uh, Compton High School, and she wound up getting with a guy named Lloyd Ferguson, who was in, a mathematician at UCLA that got married. Lloyd had a rambling five-bedroom house out in Lowell. We used to hang out at Lloyd's place. We dropped by there after law school, and OJ and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Big Lou, that is, the basketball player, would come by. Everybody would come hang out. They'd play big whiz poker, you know, talk smack, and not what we were going to do to improve the black situation in the Southern California school system, meaning higher education at that time, since everybody was going to college rather than going to the now. That's where I knew him from. He was a straight up guy, easy to deal with, pleasant, personable. Well, yeah, and then let's just talk about that. I'm going to be very candid and very brief about it. Other than this sleazeball, Nancy Grace, doing the American public the total disservice of indefensibly coming up with a fiction about what she was reporting in this case so she could assure her career. I looked at the entirety of the evidence in this case, both from having recorded every scrap of the completely televised proceedings, including those things that took place outside of the jury's presence. Together, and we thought about football, OJ was the first name that came to my mind. When I thought about doing football, I asked Cam, I was like, what, you know, what do you think about OJ? And then Cam put the play together and reached out to Larry and, and got and got in touch with OJ, and I think we reached out to Steve Stoutis, a few other people, to see if we can get um, OJ to be a part of the show. And we we went through a great deal to, to even have him on the show. I mean, um, because, I, and I appreciate Cam as well for believing in that idea of, of bringing him here, you know, because when I shared it with Cam, I was just like, this would be crazy. We start the football season off with OJ, because I know at that point, I, I didn't know much about, you know, all the ins and outs about football, and I felt we needed to surround ourselves with the best people, but somebody that was going to be outspoken, somebody who really knew their stuff, and somebody that people really couldn't refute on the topic, and that's kind of how the idea came about. But, you know, I, I, I'm i just at a loss for words right now. I, I need a moment to get, get all my thoughts together. But I have a lot I want to share, and I want to make sure it comes from the right place. Pause. Okay. Yeah. And that was dope. Uh, Mace came up with us. So, yeah, just give us some more backstory to what Mace said. Mace came up with the idea. So, we came up with the idea. Um, I was like, well, let's see what's up with OJ. That was a great idea because, like you said, uh, between you, Maurice, and, and OJ, we just like, these are people, and I'm not comparing you to OJ or whatever, but redemption, so to speak. <laughs> he's you know he's not people, comparing you to OJ. No, nah, nah, I'm just saying, no, nah, no, nah, no, you know, people who've been went through something, you know what I'm saying? Who's not necessarily bad people. Because you say they're bad people, or not you, just people in general. Yeah. So when we, we reached out and both you guys was available, it was really, really dope. Uh, and like May said, shout out to Larry. I know Larry's there. Larry's not Steve Stout. I call Steve Stout, but Larry's the one who actually made it happen, reaching out to his lawyer, shout out to his lawyer, Ben Shramble, and everybody. But um, yeah, man, it was dope. Because uh, Mo, Mo you, you said that correct. And I did see when you said it on Instagram. You could tell he getting, was getting more comfortable week after week after week after week. And he was starting to loose up, loosen up. I remember when um, we first started, his, his his manager called me and was like, uh, yeah, OJ says you guys use the word nigga a lot, man. And I told him, and, I told, and, he, and then his manager was like, yo, no, you know, I told him, that's, that's, that's the way it is. They don't mean no harm, my guy. It's like, yo, that's just the way, you know, it is. But yeah, you know, he's like, don't get it messed up. I'm, I'm down with that, but... You know, I just don't like it must look that publicly. He's like, I don't think they mean it no type of way. So by the time we we seven to eight or whatever week it was, he was like, yo, light skin niggas zip up that nigga suit too. And I'm like, oh, he's home. <laughs> and I was like, oh, nigga came home. Oh, it's home at this point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, uh, and besides that, Brown case, were you for justice in the Freddie Gray case of black boys? I call that the race car. Even in predominantly black schools, most of the teachers are white. I think that because under the rule of white supremacy and through the practice of white privilege, especially as it pertains to the criminal injustice system, white people almost always get whatever they want when it comes to black folk. When we go back to reconstruction.
corruption, when we go back to slavery, when we go back to Jim Crow, and even when we look at the criminal injustices against black people today, we see that white folks always get a guilty verdict whenever they want one. So this whole outcry by white America against the O.J. Simpson verdict, what is this infatuation? This infatuation grows out of a privilege that says when a white man is guilty and the alleged, excuse me, when a black man is accused of being guilty. When a black man is accused of being guilty and the alleged victim is white, 99.9% .9 of the time, the black man is convicted. And white people are angry because they always get what they want from the criminal justice system. And this time, they did not get what they want from the criminal justice system. This is why they're upset. It's not about justice. None of us knows whether OJ was absolutely guilty or not because we were not there. You need to understand the difference between evidence and proof. Evidence is not proof. OJ's blood was in the Bronco. That's evidence. The glove may have been able to fit, but they say he acted in court as if the glove could not fit. That's evidence, but that's not proof. Proof means somebody saw it. Proof means it was caught on film. Proof cannot be debated. Proof cannot be refuted. Proof is absolute. You have evidence. You don't have proof. For example, if I come into your house and steal something from you, if you see me walking out your house, that's evidence I may have stolen. Evidence. But I come in your house all the time. It's evidence. But if you walk in the house and catch my hand inside your safe, that is proof. Proof is conclusive. Evidence that is not conclusive. Evidence only hits at the possibility of guilt. Evidence, no matter how strong it is, only hits at the possibility of guilt. Proof is absolute. Be quite frank. You need to blame yourself if he was guilty. If he was guilty, you need to blame yourself for why he got off. Because after all, it was you, Marsha Clark, and her co Christopher Darden. After all, it was you, Marsha Clark, and her co-prosecutor, Christopher Darden, who decided to put the number one racist alive on the stand. You knew Mark Furman was not going to get on the stand and admit to being a racist. You knew Mark Furman was not going to get on the stand and say that he has uh, intentionally inflicted police violence against black folks. You knew he was going to lie because your case, so much of your case rested upon his testimony. You knew he was going to lie. So you're the one who put the number one racist in the LAPD on the stand. And Johnny Cochran, rest in peace. Johnny Cochran, rest in peace. Took it and he used it as he should have. And y'all talking about he played the race car. You put the most notorious racist on the stand and let him lie in front of national television. Don't blame that on black folks. That was a dumb decision by the prosecution. Okay, y'all did that. He had no business on the stand. Y'all did that. And Johnny Cochran being the master of the courtroom he is. One of the greatest lawyers we've ever had, okay? He took it and he exposed it and exploited it like he was supposed to do. And then y'all say he played the race card. 